Hi, my name is Bob Grinier, and I'm a volunteer with the Martin Fleischmann Memorial Project, and I'm here with Henk Uren. And uh, we are going to look at the original tank that he used for producing the Vega Valley sample and other samples that we have looked at. And uh, so far away, Hank, what have we, what have we got here? Um, a stainless steel tank inspired on the Sapphire project. And we were just looking for our, something to reuse. And this was the stainless steel tank we found. It's uh, an old water tank. And the only thing I asked somebody to weld on it uh, a looking glass and um, and some opening on the top where I could put a flange to make um, an entrance to put stump stuff in the tank mm -hmm. to put the anode in. And I started with the um, also replicated from the, the sapphire tank uh, project is two cathode um, this size small. Um, brass plates and I could adjust it and could and that was the first experience that I had to bring the cathode very close to the anode to start the process so it's the voltage and the distance that makes the start of the process so this is what I uh, I started with and um, So you got a. This is a feed pipe for gas, is it, or uh, the, well, for uh, for, for, the, for the for the vacuum. Mm -hmm. So this is what I connect to the, the vacuum pump, and and later on I started to add hydrogen and other gases. So like, when you made the Vega Valley, did you have any other gases other than residual air? No, I st that was many gases I used, um, but mo most of the times hydrogen. That was the most effective gas I could find at that time. Uh, other gases like xenon, I didn't know about the possible effects and it's very expensive to get so I didn't do that one but a hydrogen is quite easy you buy a bottle and that's it mm -hmm. and butane gas and other gases you can find easily so I I, I put it in there as well, but... So this was for the other uh, electrode? Yes. And what was the tank before? It was a water tank. Uh, something I found on the scree scrap heap. Uh, so the sort of thing someone might use to uh, have hot water for a shower in their house? Yeah, no, probably not. It was uh, with all kind of connections, so maybe for a Hydro 4 or something like that. I don't know. Mm -hmm. It was probably out of greenery something that they used for an old water tank it's thin it's only one millimeter thick uh, stainless stainless steel mm -hmm. so it's enough for one uh, atmosphere for, 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 for vacuum it's okay so it's mm -hmm. fine um, and uh, and the Vega Valley um, now these and uh, cathode was too small I could see they got very hot mm -hmm. and I wanted to increase the um, the surface of the cathode mm -hmm. the wall of the tank is too far away so I cannot I, I cannot get this low pressure or this high voltage so I had to make a new cathode and I started to make constructions on the bottom of the tank and moving it up to the anode and moving the anode down. And on a certain moment, I got this whole plate layer of this brass, double layer of brass, on top of two copper pipes. And then on, on the top copper pipes, I had some um, iron, uh, yeah, how do you call it? Pieces of iron. And then on top of that one is the brass. And that, that's that's the basis uh, of... Um, what were you expecting when you originally did that? I was expecting the blue glow, what you can see also in the Sapphire project, over the whole cathode. But to my surprise, there was distortions coming out of the, the creeks between the, the plates. And that was annoying for me, because it was not doing what I expected the system to do. 
So what did you do? Did you think, well, okay, this is not doing what I want it to do. That's Let's take it apart. No, I just accepted it. It was there. And when I w was playing with the pressure and the hydrogen, sometimes it was not too much as a problem. Mm -hmm. And so I was using it for, for many hours, maybe a uh, hundred plus hours. Sometimes it was 24 hours on, on one go. And later, then, and because I could see many things happening at the anode, I ignored the cathode. And then when I opened the tank, when I got bored because nothing really changed, except more of, much more of the same, damaged anodes and so on, um, I took out the, 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 the brass plates and that was a surprise because when I, I, I saw it, I knew it was not normal. But with your own eye, you, you can see the, the way it, it moves, the, the, it's not normal. But okay, I didn't have a microscope, not, not really, so I left it. And then uh, now, after a while, after searching, I came across you, Bob. And, um, and now it's history. You made it the Vega Valley. I created it and you made it in the sense that you gave it the name and found all I remember when you sent some, I think it was some pictures and I said, okay, yeah, I want that. <laughs> Something like that. And, uh, and uh, the, I, I didn't say at the time, but I immediately recognized a pattern uh, of a magnetic fluid. Yeah, I, I didn't know that one, but yeah. I knew it was different. I, 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 and I could think about nature in, let's say the Grand Canyon or something like that. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. can see these kind of movements in nature as well sometimes, but that was it. Um, and so this is the interesting combination. Uh, I'm, I did something, um, I created something not on purpose by accident, but I could see it's special and you made it really special. I think we were discussing earlier that um, partly the the failure in your initial thinking that these electrodes weren't doing what you thought they might do and it wasn't as simple as it first looked um, led you to do something and out of that came this serendipitous creation and um, yeah. but that that may never happen in other experiments because no one was using a tank this big and trying to solve how to get uh, samples in an opening that's this big, you had to cut the, the pieces of brass up so that yep. you could then put them in there yep. and arrange them in there down here with the support framework yep. so that you ended up with this raised area yep. and this flat thing. So, um, and, and was, was the tank itself one of the electrodes? It is the cathode. I mean... So effectively, you, you, in the Sapphire Project, as I understand it, they have a, a grounded outside and then they had two electrodes yes but not but in my configuration everything is cathodes yes with only one anode and yes the potential difference makes it that the plasma starts somewhere but when you make the the pressure low enough the blue glow plasma as i call it is going to distribute through the whole tank but then you have to lower the pressure enough and then the, the blue glow plasma is, is, is taking hold of the whole cathode. So in fact, the, 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 the history would have been that, yes, this is your uh, so-called uh, cathode, uh, but it's restricted because it's, the whole thing is conducting to the entire case. Yes. And so because you didn't have the flexibility to make the cathodes at either end and move them in and out in a precise fashion, you then did what you could, and that led to this discovery. And, and we were just discussing earlier that because you had done that and you had cut pieces into segments in order that they could go through this opening, you ended up with sheets of brass that way and then sheets of brass this way, and that forced these areas, which I believe are leading to coherence. Yeah, well, and, that, that, that's... That last one you explained very clearly that must have happened and you can see it all the time happening 
Because you actually had, if you imagine uh, one sheet of brass with another sheet of brass just above, and they're pretty flat, but if you actually look at the brass, it has these um, uh, brushed sanding marks yes, on there. Exactly. And so when one piece is laying on top of another, you have a range of cavities that are in the microns to millimeters range yeah, over that whole exactly. surface. Yeah, exactly. And in all of the other cathode work that I've seen, they're always looking at one electrode pointing against another electrode and the damage that does with the discharge. Exactly. The, the, this, this is absolutely the difference. And that's something probably nobody expected and but they didn't think neither me yeah. no, nobody did so it's an accident that we find it and, and the actual crack, crack between the pieces that you had to put in as well allowed for a focusing in that gap yes which again had variation and but as the the valley started to take over and build the the the, the plasma started to build a home for itself yeah it started to uh, create the resonant structures that it needed to enhance its own existence. Exactly. And then that bled out through the gap between the sheets yeah. Yeah. and led to this uh, valley structure. So yeah. it's, it's a, it, for me, it's a, a wonderful story of how uh, you didn't intend to do something, and, yeah. and, but you intended to do... Uh, I've, I've phrased that wrongly. You intended to try and replicate something to the best of your ability. Yes. It failed, so you went, well, I've done all this work. Let's see what I can do with it. Yeah. And through a sequence. So you kind of have to thank the Sapphire team for inspiring you enough yeah. to fail and then to succeed in a way that was never expected uh, to create this piece of serendipity that tells in my view, a fantastic about, amount, amount about how uh, um, plasma is able to self-organize and build a world for itself. Yes, exactly. And, and so, and, and the building itself, we had a discussion about it, is it's, it's not in the line of the cathode and the anode. It's out of line. It's hiding what I'm... T this is what I see all the time. Plasma. And you, you said hiding? I, I and, just, and, on purpose because yeah. it's a strange behavior yeah. it's just behavior and it's strange and i would think we'll leave that for the next video yeah exactly it's uh, and we can see it happening so hiding is very simple everybody understands it and why is the big question so thank you hank this is the chamber that made the vega valley see you in the next video